hundred million ways makes up for the pain that you experienced here on earth. Some of you have been victims of child abuse. Some of you have gone through excruciating circumstances because of your family. Some of you have been betrayed by your wife. You've been betrayed by your husband. You have gone through pain that I have known nothing of. But I want you to know, is life fair, people say? Well, certainly not on this side of the glory, that's for sure. Life ain't fair. But if you take into account the eternal weight of glory, we will discover that those who have suffered the most receive the most compensation in glory, and you will be so thrilled that you'll say, God, it makes up for every sleepless night. It makes up for every emotional pain. It makes up for all of the fears that other people have put upon me because the weight of glory is far in comparison. And so what the Apostle Paul says is, first, the inner is more important than the outer, and secondly, the glory is more important than the suffering, more important than the affliction. There's a third contrast, and that is between time and eternity, or, if you like, between the seen and the unseen. Verse 18, I'll try to read it correctly this time. While we look at the things which are seen, I didn't. I just, my eyes just keep skipping over that little N-O-T. Now listen, folks, I do know how to read. Maybe I need to just stop and prove that. Not very well, but I can read. While we look not at the things which are seen, give me a hand, would you? <laughs> Thank you. But at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, I got it, is eternal. Thank you. Now notice the contrast here between time and eternity, between the seen and the unseen. You look at the things which are seen, and uh, life becomes very, very disappointing. Even in the life of the Apostle Paul, many people thought that he was a disappointment. He was a Pharisee. He was reared as a Pharisee. He was a man who was highly respected, and then he called it all dung that he might win Christ. It was all refuse. And uh, then he went through life and experienced the hardships that we wrote, read about just a few moments ago. And so the Apostle Paul says, if I were to look at the things which are seen, if I were to look at all of the disappointments that I have had in my ministry in the churches, where people have been nurtured and discipled and they've grown in the Lord, and then they've fallen back and they have left me, if I were to look at that, I would be disappointed. If I were to look at the ravages of my body, the disintegration, the, the sicknesses and the hardships that I've gone through, I would be miserable. But he says we need to look at that which is unseen. Why? Because the unseen is eternal. If the one contrast is between the scale that has a feather on it plus a hundred million pounds on the other side, this contrast has to do with time. If you were to take a measuring tape from this earth and string it all the way to the farthest star, and I don't think we know how far the farthest star is away, but hundreds of billions of light years, your life would only be a thread on that measuring stick. You've got an eternity, hundreds and billions upon billions, cubed factorial, number of years in which you are going to live, and after you've lived that long, you haven't even begun. Because it's not proper to talk about beginning an infinite series. Nobody ever begins an infinite series. Beginning implies an end. Well, this is Pastor Lutzer. I had someone point out after that message that perhaps it is proper to speak about beginning an infinite series, but of course it's not proper to speak about ending an infinite series because it has no end. So regardless of how we define the beginning of that series, one thing is true. Eternity is a very, very long time. And I need to emphasize what I just mentioned in the message that we live but a sliver, as it were, 
along this continuum. So the question that you and I have to ask is simply this, how are we living it? Oftentimes, before I get out of bed in the morning, I say, Lord, today, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I want to live this day for you. I want to be able to lay my head on the pillow tonight and know that I have done your will to the best of my ability. Like that little jingle says, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. I conclude today to talk to those of you who are hurting, those of you who are going through pain in your marriage, in your relationships, perhaps physical pain, perhaps deep disappointment even in yourself. Just know this, this too will pass, and eternity is just up ahead. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. The renewing of the inner man, dwelling on the glory and not the affliction, and seeing the eternal unseen. These are the things that matter most, as Dr. Erwin Lutzer has brought part two of his thought-provoking message. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago. We believe this brief series will help you understand what really matters in life and in eternity. Our series on things can be yours on CD as our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. For details, call 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. On the Internet, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or write to Running to Win, Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. This is Dave McAllister. Join us for tomorrow's Running to Win.